This is all the gear. That's Saku's dog food right there. 3232 formula from a nook shook. Extra stuff. Some tackle. A water lily. Got a uh, rain gear on top, a bunch of random clothes, you know, socks and base layers and some sleeping gear. Maps. A book or two, a journal, some first aid over here. Fishing rods, ammo, uh, just some lists of things I got left to get. Some stuff for Saku. His leash is upstairs, cutting tools, stuff that'll be in my pocket. Matches, lighters, multi tools, some power cord, bright orange colored, beer bangers in the yellow case there. I got some fuel, isobutane, with a pocket stove. I got an MSR one coming in, I haven't got that yet. Quite a few packs of matches, and I got some lighters over there as well. Sleeping bag, tarp, uh, just my pot, one pot, kettle, tent, tent pole, sleeping pad. Loa boots, high cup boots, good support, leather, I need those, especially going up the rivers. Uh, all my electronics, InReach, right, sponsored by Canadian Geographic, the World Canadian Geographical Society, that's their flag I'm carrying. Uh, camp shoes, might take those with me, may not, might have you a smaller pair that are lighter extra GoPro and then my GoPro I'm taking with me charger flags represent Newfoundland Newfoundland Labrador Wicket and uh, yep batteries my Canon is in my hand right now my DSLR camera so this one here and the GoPro so Besides that, there's a lot of food that I got with Saku's dog food and tripod over there. What else do we got? That's the bulk of it. That's my bag. One of them, I got some more stuff coming in though. Canoe, which is out in the shed. It's all good. Things are coming together. So with a with a trip of this magnitude, 1,700 kilometers, uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to carry all the food with me in one shot. So in talking with my bush pilot, uh, we planned some food drops. I'm going to take 25 days of food with me when I leave, and that is in this barrel right here. That's going to be my food canister for the entire trip. It adds buoyancy to my canoe, keeps everything dry, and it's also a little more difficult for bears to get into. Right now, for 25 days, I am carrying approximately 42 to 44 pounds of food. Uh, it's fluctuating because I have a couple other things I need to to add or take away, I'm undecided. Uh, for my second food drop, which will come at around the 25-30 day mark, depending on how I'm making out, uh, if I'm catching more fish, maybe that's, those 25 days of food can last for, for 30 days or 35 days. Uh, if uh, I'm getting enough fish to supplement me and him. So, <clears throat> for my second food drop, I have these two boxes right here and this food drop is I have enough food for 30 days uh, and much like the first food drop it's around 31 to 3200 calories per day. This 30 day food drop is weighing in at 54.5 pounds and that's around 1.8 pounds of food per day. That's the same as this food drop uh, or my, my first uh, stage food supply I'm taking with me. And it's the same as my third food drop over here, which is also around 1.8 pounds of food for, per day. It's 65 pounds, and I hope for stage three, my third food supply, to, uh, to last me roughly 36 days. Uh, 
So if you add it all up, I have 25 days plus 30 days plus 36. I expect the trip to be around 90 days. The final box right here, this is just miscellaneous gear items. So every time the pilot comes in, uh, I may need some more fishing tackle. I may need some more rope. I may need, uh, well, I'll definitely need some new underwear because I'm only going to take two pairs with me to start off. So I'll definitely burn those underwear and grab another pair or two. Uh, it's going to have some first aid items, things like that. With regards to Saku's food, Saku himself has around 90 days of food. He has 90 days, he's not around, he has 90. And it's around 0.9 pounds per day for Saku. So every time uh, the pilot comes in, not only is he going to give me food, but in these boxes is high energy uh, Inukshuk performance dog food for him and uh, they gave us plenty of high performance food for dogs. So any dog that uh, is in demanding conditions and needs that go-to energy so there's extra fat, uh, there's extra protein and uh, that's what he has. So other items in this box, uh, what else is there? Uh, there's tape, there's an extra fishing rod just in case I crack one of my telescopic rods. Uh, there is some tobacco for my pipe, there's some gloves. That's the gist of what's in this box right here. I'm also going to just put my other axe uh, with it, just in case uh, who knows what may happen, knock on wood. Uh, I hope that I don't lose the axe I'm going to start the trip with, but you never know. So, right inside of the front pouch of my PFD is my survival kit. So, when in here, I just have a bunch of items. Uh, you know, I have some lighters, uh, ones wrapped in duct tape to keep it extra waterproof. I have snare wire, I have water purifying tablets, flint, a small knife, uh, some paracord, a survival blanket, uh, some matches, there's uh, a little pack of hot chocolate in a tea bag, granola bar, uh, there's a spare compass in there, a whistle, uh, there's some dryer lint, Give you a little look inside here now, a bit of dryer lint to get a fire going quick, just in case. Um, there's also uh, some fishing, or well, one fishing lure actually. Uh, some hooks, weights, a swivel, and some fishing line. And that's the bulk of it. Uh, just some very important items that could help me in case of a capsize in our canoe uh, I may lose everything but in that pouch in the life jacket I'm going to have this always with me so that's vital especially when you're far from help and traveling solo uh, on this compass there's also a magnifying glass which I can use to reflect light to draw the attention of a plane from above, but also to generate a strong point of heat, which could help spark a fire as well. Uh, you know, if the flint was failing, which it won't, but it's always good to have that extra option. That life jacket right there has my survival kit, as I said, and uh, you know, everything's about weight. I had to minimize what I was putting in there. So uh, it wasn't adding too much bulk, just like the rest of the gear I have. Everything is about keeping it light, especially when I'm carrying it all myself. Uh, unfortunately, when I'm going to film this trip, I have to take a little extra uh, electronics. So I have my solar panel, which I'd need anyways. I would need this Nomad 20s, what it's called. It's a gold zero 
solar panel and that <coughs> would be needed anyway for my GPS which is over here and my satellite phone which is right here uh, that needs to be charged by the solar panel so that right there is the food barrel uh, I'll pop it open for you there now I have a harness on it that's going to allow me uh, to carry it on my back of course because originally they just come on their own without the harness so inside here there's 25 days of food uh, the first stage of the expedition as you can see that's all the goods I'm not going to go through them but uh, you know I have a lot of foods that are <coughs> high in calories of course uh, calorie dense would be a better way of saying it so things that are not as heavy but they pack more calories a lot of fat but I also got a good balance of protein and carbs as well lots of oatmeal lots of granola uh, jerky oils uh, lots of trail mix and nuts stuff like that so that's going to go a long way you know when you're into this type of travel uh, one very important item in the planning process is having a scale and uh, this one with a clothes hanger type hook on the bottom of it uh, is great and uh, everything that comes with me is accounted for uh, by its weight I'm just going to run through some of the items uh, some of the more important ones so some of the items I have here uh, I guess I'm going to start off with my boy Saku this is Saku's bag it's a saddle style pack which is going to sit over his back like this like it is on my leg right now uh, right now there's about 16 pounds of his food in there it's it's majority food I would say 95 percent the rest of the weight is going to come from his bowl his leash his GoPro attachment and a a waterproof casing to put over this in case it's wet so that's that's what he's going to be trucking around of course a lot of this trip will be paddling but there will be portages and those will be the times where he'll wear this if i'm going up river pulling the canoe saku will probably not wear it he'll run along shore or he'll sit in the canoe and so will this anytime i can take it off of my will and just like last year's expedition across newfoundland whenever i got a chance to give him a break i would when I was pulling the sled on some of the, the snowy conditions out in the western part of Newfoundland in the Long Range Mountains, I would always, uh, most of the time, take this pack off and pull it on the sled behind me because i got to save him, uh, especially last year when he was only a, an eight-month-old pup. Now he's close on two years old, so uh, he's a bit stronger. He'll have no sweat uh, carrying this one. So I'll just quickly go through uh, just some of the items i got scattered out here now. It's like a yard sale, but uh, as you can tell, it is fairly organized and going on a trip this long, uh, you know, when basically your life is at risk uh, at each and every moment. Decisions are important, the right gear is important. Uh, you know, I've done training for this across Newfoundland, done a lot of other small trips, and I, I am prepared. Uh, but part of that is being organized. And what I have for cutting tools. Uh, I'm going light. I just have a very small collapsible uh, backhoe saw. Right, so it folds in. It's very much like the, uh, the Laplander version, but it's orange. Orange because I don't want to lose that. That's important. And uh, if something that's dark green, which is uh, the color of the backhoe version, uh, the Laplander, if that green is dropped in the grass or in the trees somewhere, uh, I might never find it. But it's going to be difficult to misplace something of this color. I have my uh, Frisker's Axe. So it's the smallest model they make. It's more like a hatchet. Super lightweight. Hollow through the handle. But has some very good chopping power. And uh, I, I'm going to cook by fire majority of the time. I do have a couple of isobutane fuel canisters over there 
more or less for emergency but uh, I plan to cook by fire and uh, it'll be small fires in the morning and the evening so I won't need to harvest too much wood uh, so taking an axe this small I was I was thinking I'm bringing my heavier Grand First and Brooks axe but uh, the extra weight is just uh, I just don't want to carry it around so this is a very sharp maintained axe uh, I look after it all the time with a stone, which I also will be taking. That's in my pack over there. So along with the paracord that I have in my survival kit inside the life jacket, I also got two 50-foot coils of uh, Blaze Orange right here. That's paracord. And I have a smaller 25-foot in, uh, in a neon yellow color. I got my fishing rods, so under my hunting and fishing gear here now, uh, I have a telescopic rod, which goes out like that, and, you know, fishing rods are fragile, you know, they're, they're built to last, but when you're bushwhacking and trekking, uh, you know, and, and going a long distance, things can, uh, can break easily, and uh, this will probably be my, my go-to rod, actually. It's a four-piece ugly stick, so it's a bit uh, heavier of a rod, and that's my two fishing rods. In here, I have my reel, along with a backup reel, probably tough for you to see right now. Uh, and I have around a little over a dozen lures. I have, uh, you know, some swivels, hooks, weights, uh, an extra s spool of fishing line. That's about it. I have my, uh, my shotgun. This is a uh, 12 gauge pump action and uh, big use for this early on when the hunting season is closed will be for protection from blackbeards. Uh, you know, for me, it's the best form of protection. If you find yourself in a tight space with a black bear, uh, you know, you'll feel the safest when you have a firearm with you. I've never out there to kill a black bear, uh, but if my life's threatened, uh, you have to do what you have to do. So this is weighing in at around six and a half pounds. A little heavy, but uh, you know, its weight is appreciated. Later in the trip, uh, when early September rolls around, uh, after around a month and two weeks, I'll be able to hunt waterfowl. And uh, that's obviously gonna come in use there. I have some ammo, uh, I have a mixture of some, uh, some slugs, which will be just in case black beer uh, gets a little too close and threatens me and I have some bird shot in there as well. If I'm on a portage and uh, sometimes if I'm carrying my canoe I may not be able to carry my shotgun with me either at the same time unless I uh, lay it up uh, on the top from yoke to seat and tie it on much like I do with a paddle. So uh, I'll probably leave the shotgun either uh, with my gear ahead or behind me uh, on, a, on a portage. So uh, when I have the canoe, I'll have some beer bangers with me as well. And this beer banger set just has a pen which will uh, eject and shoot the banger. So the bangers are down here. And then I also have some flares as well in case I find myself in an emergency and need to signal uh, a plane or a chopper from above. So of course I'm filming uh, the expedition and with that comes a, a big pile of electronic gear and I try to uh, minimize that as much as possible but it's difficult. So leading the way uh, would be my Goal Zero solar panel and it's the Nomad 20 so it's a three piece solar panel and uh, that's going to do its job in giving me uh, energy from the sun, which will be collected by the Sherpa 50 Goal Zero power bank, which is in this, uh, this Ziploc bag right here. And uh, the, the good thing with this is that uh, it's tough to see, but it has an inverter which allows me to connect uh, a 12 volt plug. So that's very important for charging my Canon batteries 
uh, as well as my satellite phone. And the satellite phone is also very important. I have a Spot Global satellite phone uh, as well for safety. Uh, my main safety device is this, uh, you know, weatherproof, almost bomb-proof uh, Garmin InReach Explorer. And the Garmin has GPS maps built in. It has a, it's a two-way communicator. Um, I can, I will be posting, uh, you know, my links on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, basically, my coordinates where I'm to each evening, uh, along with a short message. It has weather updates. Uh, I can make waypoints, uh, and overall, it's a it's a great rig, and it weighs next to nothing. And at all times, this will be strapped on to my life jacket. And in case of a ditch of my canoe, just like having my first aid kit inside my <coughs> the pouch of the life jacket, I'm also going to have the inReach. So along with my inReach GPS, uh, you know that will be good to to get me out of a jam and to keep me oriented at all times. But uh, I like to go traditionally by the topographic maps. I have about twenty, I think a little less, uh, one to two hundred thousand topographic maps. That's enough detail for me to find my way and pair that up with a compass and uh, I'm good to go. I'll be wearing two pairs of Loa mountain boots. This is one pair. These are the Combat GTX boot. Uh, they're high cut. I believe around 11 inches high. And I also have a second pair in my resupply gearbox behind me. And uh, I'll probably wear those later on in the trip. Uh, to get back and see the difference of the two types of boot and how they perform. Uh, Loa gave those to me, so uh, the least I can do is compare the boots. So these are a good, solid boot. They're full leather. Uh, the grips on the bottom are fantastic. I used a similar boot last year on my Newfoundland trip, and uh, I have nothing bad to say about them. Good ankle support, uh, you know, good grip. Probably one of the more important items in my uh, in my gear kit is this dry suit, uh, this Kokatat dry suit, and it's complete neck to toe with built-in socks. Uh, so basically, I can put this on and put my boots on, and it's like a bomb-proof rain rain gear, and uh, it's going to be especially important for walking up the the rivers, going against the flow. Uh, when, they, when I'm doing that all day long, uh, it will eventually, it'll get cold and of course all the dampness on my feet and stuff is a risk for uh, things such as trench foot if I don't dry uh, <coughs> them out properly at the end of the day. So to keep myself dry, uh, when it's not too warm, uh, I'm going to be wearing this. When it heats up, uh, I'm probably just going to have to go with my normal quick dry cargo pants. Also, uh, I can paddle uh, in a downpour of rain with this on. And if I'm in the middle of a big lake and we do happen to have a ditch uh, with the draw cord snugly around my neck, uh, the only thing that's going to get wet is my head. Everything else, even if I'm submerged in the, in the water, will stay dry. So this is a very, very important piece of equipment. And later in the fall, when it starts to get colder, uh, it's going to be even more vital uh, for preventing hypothermia. A sleeping bag is very light. Uh, I believe it's just over a pound. It's a RAB Neutrino 400. It's a down filled sleeping bag and uh, it's good for a comfort level of around minus three. So very lightweight and that's the name of the game. So I have a RAB sleeping bag. Compress is very small, even a little smaller than this. There's some air in there now. Uh, my tent, which is in here, uh, is a MSR Hubba Hubba NX two-person tent, and again, very lightweight, uh, spacious enough for me and Saku, and uh, that's the tent of choice. I have a bag for my clothing. Uh, there's not much in regards to clothing. Uh, you know, there's some a couple extra pairs of socks. Uh, there's some dry wool sleeping gear, which is the most important. At the end of the day, if I'm wet walking rivers, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, when I get that gear off, when I get back to camp, I have some dry stuff to get into and I can sleep warm and comfortably. 
So, uh, you know, there's some extra underwear, but besides that, that's all that's in here. Uh, I have a couple pairs of socks for the daytime. I have my cargo pants. I have uh, a sun hat. And I also have a ball cap, right? And some of those hot summer days in Labrador, uh, the sun hat's gonna come in handy. Uh, keep all that heat off my neck and head area. I have the original bug shirt. Along with the food barrel, I'll have this 110 liter Kelty pack. So this will take all my gear that's not food.